From ugly press conferences to satisfying back and forths, the bitterness between Dana White and Ariel Hawani continues. The MMA journalist recently lashed out at the boss, calling him a liar because of a statement about UFC fighters, and Dana claims his fighters are free to leave any time they would like. Remember when the UFC president showed up at a press conference and announced the exit of Cameroonian heavyweight Francis Ngannou? We're going to release him from his contract, we're going to give up our right to match, and he can go wherever he wants and do whatever he wants. Um, and uh, yeah, that's where we're at. Well, he went into great detail about why the Predator and the promotion had a falling out. For starters, Dana claims Ngannou wasn't up for the challenge and wanted to fight lesser opponents. I think Francis is in a place right now where he wants, he doesn't want to take a lot of risk. Feels like he's in a good position um, where he could fight lesser opponents and, and make more money. Or in other words, he had no interest in fighting John Jones and wanted to continue feeding off guys lower in the rankings. And shortly after, the boss said fighters aren't bound to the UFC in any way whatsoever. And if they don't want to be here, they can leave whenever. Before I even tell you what Ariel said, I want to get one thing out of the way. Apart from being a fantastic fighter, Nganu also happens to be really smart. That is not Nganu's best punch, right? That's how powerful this man is. Look, he's almost fading backwards as he lands that right hand and sends Arlovsky as a big dude flying backwards to the canvas. He'd be a fool to turn down a clash with Jones since it equates to a serious amount of money. The former heavyweight champion detailed his own reasons for leaving the promotion, and to be honest, that makes a lot more sense. It's to be trapped. It's not to lose my freedom, which I value very much. You guys know how the UFC contract can be restrictive. But yeah, Ariel was furious about hearing how Dana said his fighters were free to leave anytime they like. That's not the case at all. Or at least that's what Helwani thinks. The prominent MMA journalist listed a bunch of names like Luke Rockhold, Nathan Diaz, and Ala Quinta, questioning the boss about whether these guys actually wanted to be there. I mean, Nate made it super clear he wanted to hang up the gloves. He was finished with the UFC and not on good terms. So when Ariel calls Dana a liar for claiming his fighters are free, there's some some truth in that. Take Luke Rockhold, for example. The guy's literally 38 years old now. And if I'm being honest, he doesn't look fit to fight at all now. But since he still had a fight left on his contract, the boss made sure he fought it out instead of releasing him. Same with Nate. He had to fight out his contract even though he was clearly done competing for the promotion. And from there, it was all Nate Diaz. He pressured. And we talked about that high volume striking and boxing from Nate Diaz, and that's exactly what got him the win here. So all this just makes me wonder, is this even a fighting promotion? Because it sure doesn't sound like it. I mean, whenever a fighter demands something in return, Dana and all the other executives think their best bet is to push them out. What about us in all of this? The fans. It's us who make the wheel turn, right? And I get the fact that it's a business. The executives need to make sure everyone gets paid. But are they closing the door on a potential Ngannou versus Jones matchup? That is absurd. It could have been one of the biggest fights in the history of the promotion. And in case you think Ariel doesn't know what he's talking about, check this. Remember when GSP was retired and wanted to fight Oscar De La Hoya for charity in an exhibition bout? He word retired. He had retired from MMA. And I don't know about you guys, but that pretty much means he's free to do whatever he wants. Everybody knows it's not a surprise. I, I announced my retirement. There's no tears. I'm very happy to do it. It's uh, It takes a lot of discipline though to retire on top. But believe it or not, even then the UFC had the power to decide whether he could fight or not. And when Oscar first pitched the idea, GSP was blown away. He couldn't wait to compete for a good cause, and despite all restrictions, he got Lorenzo Fertitta on the phone and ended up convincing him. Fertitta rang up the boss in the hopes to get him on his side. But guess what? He immediately shot down the fight. Dana did not allow St. Pierre to fight Oscar. So when you think about it, Ariel is right. UFC fighters can't just get up and leave because the contracts they're offered aren't exactly fair. And I understand. Why even sign a contract like that in the first place? Well, when you're an aspiring MMA fighter and the UFC offers you a contract, you take the deal no matter what. All these fighters bought into it because it was their dream to fight for the biggest promotion in the world, not because they have a thing for slave labor. And to get a deeper insight as to what really happened between the UFC and Francis Ngannou, let's talk about what the Predator wanted from the promotion. The former heavyweight 
middleweight champ said it was never about the money, since he had more than enough. The boss kept talking about how they offered him $8 million for the Jones fight, set to make him the highest paid heavyweight of all time. Had he taken the fight, Francis actually wanted representation. He wanted fighters to have private sponsors, an advocate on the board, and most importantly, health care. If you ask me, these are things the UFC should have given fighters a long time ago. And there's one more thing. Additionally, he requested that the boss publicize his crossover fight with Tyson Fury, a legendary boxer. It was okay when McGregor did it though, right? Dana looked like he was having the time of his life while promoting that fight. Many people are right when they say he has a soft corner for the Irishman. And even if he does, who are we to say anything? Connor has made him a much, much richer man. He made it look easy. He said, first round KO, mark my words. All right, Connor, we believe you. It was an absolutely legitimate stoppage. I mean, that was just glorious. Maybe it's time all of us realize Dana is a businessman and not someone who loves fighting. Because after what happened between the boss and Nganu, it's obvious fighters aren't free in the UFC. But the president isn't about to let that slide. He hit back at Ariel, calling him a sack of on earth. These events aren't exactly related, but I'm sure Helwani calling him a liar had something to do with it. For those of you who don't know much about Ariel, all this isn't exactly new. The Canadian-American journalist is known for being super super controversial and calling people out in public. He's been in altercations with fighters and other personalities associated with MMA as well. But that's his style. That's the brand he's trying to build. And I'm sure you remember his interactions with Quentin Jackson. Absolutely legendary. But yeah, it sounds like Dana is being a little salty by taking this to the next level. Let's see how Helwani responds though. I'm pretty sure this is about to go on for a really long time. And credit to Ariel, someone had to give the boss a wake up call and to be honest, I always knew it would go to him. He's the poster boy for stirring drama and controversy at the promotion. But Ariel is usually the aggressor. Dana normally doesn't say much, but whenever he does, it's usually a reply to someone. The president called him a sack of but here's something you probably don't know. About two weeks back, the MMA journalist hit him with something else too. He accused Dana of having absolutely zero knowledge about his roster. This was after Dana forgot Islam's name at the presser. If Volkanovski could pull this off, it's obviously massive. Um, and if, uh, if um, y you know, um, <laughs> yeah. Ariel blasted him for being such a bad promoter since that's literally his job. He's responsible for telling everyone what's going on at the promotion. And the fact that he can't remember the lightweight champion's name is embarrassing. Helwani also went on to question whether Uncle Dana even knows 5% of the roster. Like, could he recognize a fighter if they walked into UFC HQ? Right or wrong, Ariel has put forward a solid point. And I think it's time people started paying attention. Anyway, that's why Helwani called UFC president Dana White a liar. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.